Hi guys, I'm Cordy and today before we get started, I want to share with you my favorite character design magazine. It's called Character Design Quarterly. I absolutely love it. There are interviews with all types of amazing character designers and they also share their craft and how they come up with characters and how they bring them to life. My favorite part in the magazine is the little tutorial in the end. It's like a short little summary with short little tips. And this one's on hair, very helpful. And the next one I think is the space helmet one. All super helpful. Another fun feature is the prompts. They always have an article where an artist picks up prompts and then shows how he or she brings the character to life. The whole workflow, the whole process. And I decided I want to do that too. I want to give it a go. So I picked up three prompts out of this magazine. Now I'm not going to show you the artist and I'm not going to show you what the artist designed. You're going to have to pick up your own issue and take a look. I'm going to show you how I worked with the prompts and came up with my little design. So the prompts were astronaut, small and confusion. So I figured it's probably best to come up with like a little story and then bring the character to life in the story. So for me, the first thing was clear. I don't want the astronaut to be a human. That's kind of boring. And where is a astronaut in a spaceship usually or a space station. So I definitely wanted to have the story happen in space. And the word small really needs a comparison. You always have to have something really big to compare to. And then also the word planet came to mind. Now confusion is also a quite interesting and difficult prompt I find. But I figured, you know, since we have small, it might have something to do with, you know, something seeming big or small. Or another thing that came to mind was uh, being disturbed while doing an action, having something unexpected happen. So yeah, with small, I was also thinking of maybe having like a big animal as my astronaut. So this is the whole conclusion. I decided the big planet is going to be the big belly of a hippo or an elephant. And then on that big planet, we're going to have some small aliens land and think that it is a, a planet instead of a big belly. And all this obviously confuses our astronaut, hippo astronaut or elephant astronaut, because he is um, repairing his spaceship and all this happens during that time. So this is what my sketch looked like. And I want to show you how I got there, how I drew it. So let's get started. I started with a circle. So you can you can grab a piece of paper and draw along with me. I think that would be absolute fun because maybe you can come up with your own idea with those three prompts and then let me know in the comments. So here's the, the beginning. I started with the round belly first and then added the upper body to it, kind of thinking where I want the arms to be. I knew one needs to be somehow holding on to the spaceship and the other one I thought uh, would be good to hold something. So I just put it out to the side and then I, I drew the, the other big circle, which is the helmet. The legs, when you're in outer space and there's no gravity are sort of useless, so <laughs> they're just kind of splayed out. I knew I want him to wear some sort of space boots there. And um, I also knew I wanted him to have like a space backpack with like being attached to the spacecraft somehow. But uh, it, to indicate that he's doing the repairs on the spaceship, I'm giving him a space tool. <laughs> I don't know what it does, but um, yeah, it definitely looks spacey. So the other hand is going to hold on to the spaceship. And I thought it would be cool if the spaceship could sort of frame his head. So there's like a little piece there that he can hold on to just before the spaceship sort of curves upward and 
down here is the little tube. I'm thinking it's a tube that connects him to the spaceship so he doesn't just float away. Now over here are the little aliens. I made like really tiny spaceships, just super simple, landing on his belly. Obviously, to claim the planet, you need to put up a flag. So I drew the flag and then the people are just sort of like squiggles, little squiggle people that uh, are taking over that new found planet. Now over here, I'm gonna add some extra detail to the spacesuit, some like moving parts underneath the helmet. And now all we need is our hippo face. So I want it to be angled a little bit. So I'm doing this cross to kind of help me out there. Let's hope it works. Um, you're gonna start with two squares, a big one and a small one. So the snout of the hippo is kind of big. So making, making the rough blocks, drawing them in first is really helpful. And then giving the head a bit more detail. A smiling mouth. I want it to be a happy, confused hippo. And then the snout and the little nose holes. I'm not quite sure which way they go, inward or outward. Let's see. So there's the eye. Left eye is a little bit hidden. And then the right eye over here, just roughly drawing it in. Ears we need and a little bit of hair around the snout. So that's the rough sketch. Now fine linering in and adding even more detail. So you always want to go from like rough to finer detail. I'm using a 0.3 fine liner here. And as you go around, you want to make sure, especially here with the tube, which lines need to be in front and which lines need to be in the back. With the pencil, we can always erase it. So up here with the hand holding onto the spaceship, with the pencil, I drew in the fingers up there, but uh, we actually don't need them because they're sort of holding on behind the spaceship. So the face, drawing in all those lines, making him happy, confused, and surprised that there's a little gang of aliens landing on his belly. And then moving over to our little ships. I thought it would be cute to give them a window so they look like real people. And then another little detail here on the tube makes it look interesting and coming around here for the spaceship. Now my spaceship is called Hippo Quest, you can come up with your own name, maybe Hippolo or something funny. But uh, I think that adds to the whole narrative. You know, we want to know what our hippo kind of does in space. Why is he in space? Well, he's going on a quest. So I just add a little bit of decoration here for my spaceship. You can design your very own decoration. I thought lines would be cool. So up next, all of it happens in space, right? So we need darkness. So I'm going to use some ink to, to darken those areas. Make sure if you also use watercolor like me later on, make sure that it is water resistant ink, otherwise it becomes really messy. But as you see, it's really nice and black and really gives us the, the idea or the, the right covered up opaque black that we need. And at the end there, I'll just let it sort of run out there, do this like dry brush technique to let the black blend into my sketchbook page. I didn't really want to cover the entire bit with black. I thought, I thought it was more interesting to have it sort of, yeah, run into the page and give that sensation that there's an illustration on the page. Now go all around like this, all around the little hippo. Now on the edge of the spaceship, I want to add a little bit of decay. It's not a brand new spaceship, it's a pretty old one. So with my fine liner, I'm just gonna make like these tiny little edges in there, like little lines and little squiggles, just to make it look a little bit more worn out. And I'm gonna take it all the way across that indent there and down the side 
to make it look evenly worn out. Here we go. So time to add some color. I'm going to use watercolor, a gray, blue, gray, purple, pink and orange already prepared in my little dish, just diluted with water. So it's sort of the first wash of color, like the, the mid tone of the colors that I had in mind, starting with the spaceship. I'm, I'm going for a bit of like a, a gray color that is not the color color of it, but to just show it that it's, it used to be white, but it is, you know, banged up and worn out. So I'm trying to maybe leave some little texture that the watercolor makes on its own, all on its own in there and just let it dry like that. The main body of my hippo, I want to be purple. So giving him a little purple wash here down his belly, keeping everything nice and smooth. Also the, the little backpack there on the back and the edge of the helmet and his arm over here. Next, I'm going to add some orange for our spaceships, alien spaceships, and over here a little gray for our tube and the tool. Now I realized I forgot the strap for the backpack. So here's the strap for the backpack added in. Now back to watercolor, the soles of the little boots are going to be pink and the boot on the other side as well and the gloves also pink. And to sort of tie it in with the ship, I'm going to make one line with pink here on one side. And, and then we need the inside of the helmet It'll also get a little pink to sort of sort of make it pop a little next to the head of our hippo. And then those little creases there, I'm gonna give it sort of a gradient from purple to yellow, purple, pink, orange, and yellow to just give it a little detail, a little more interesting space to look. And the flag for our aliens, I want pink as a contrast to the purple belly. And I think the tube needs to be a bit darker. So let's make it darker. Just going over it with another layer of watercolor. So technically you could add the darkest tones um, for the for the whole design with watercolor as well. But I choose something else. So the brown here, I didn't show you in the beginning. I added later sort of a mid mid brown, not a dark one, not a super light one, but like a mid brown, just to give the head a base. I prefer to use a different medium to or to add the lightest and the darkest shades. So here, a little layer of purple on top of the pink, just to make it look a little bit worn out. So I'm not gonna be super neat with this. It's just to give it a little bit like of a a, a darkness in the pink, if you will. Here we go. Okay. So that's the watercolor layer. Let it dry, let it dry with a hairdryer or just like that. And then I'm bringing in my best friends, the pastel pencils. I really love using those over watercolor. So colors and a couple of grays. I also forgot to show you the brown here. I also use a brown one later on. But uh, here I'm, I'm going in to add the shadows. And because with pastel, you can make really nice gradients. They're so powdery. So it's really easy to show the, the difference between the lightest or the midtone and the darkest. I'm adding a little bit of pink here to make the strap and the backpack a little bit darker but as you see under the arm and then under here at the beginning of the belly we need some darker purple tones to show that it's a 3d belly a really big one that looks like a planet so on the sides here where the light can't reach i'm thinking kind of the light source is 
where the aliens come from. Later on, I'm going to show you how to give those spaceships, those tiny spaceships, a bit of a glow as well. So around there, we're going to add the dark bits. And yes, if you use a different medium, you can just go over it with watercolor again, adding the another layer to to add the dark tones. But I prefer my pastel so around the helmet as well and then here on the leg I'm going to keep the knee free because that's where I want the glow from those aliens to hit now pink here for the shadows in the gloves at the bottom here and then where he holds the tool and then getting a little bit of shadow onto the fingers the sole of the foot just to show that it's slightly round I'm gonna darken the edges and then here I'm gonna leave a little bit of light to add later and then darkening in the inside of the helmet the inside of the helmet doesn't catch a lot of light so it definitely needs to be darker so grabbing the yellow I'm gonna drop in a little bit of yellow there and then around onto the ink around the little spaceships just dropping in a little bit of pastel powder to give it a little glow and then onto the knee and onto the belly to show that the glow hits our hippo and then if we need even more dark we can grab the grays and I'm just going along the lines that I made in that little tube with my pastel pencil just to give it a little bit more texture. Now the tool gets a bit of shadow where the hand holds it and maybe at the edges and a little bit of white for the gentle reflections because it's not a spotlight, it's sort of like a more of a gentle light. And then the brown pastel pencil for the darkest darks or the deepest shadows on the face of our hippo so around the edges here and then underneath the chin for sure between his little well not little but big nostrils and around the eyes it's very wrinkly around the eyes with a hippo so we want to show that and then a the couple of lines down the center here we go and he gets a little bit of yellow as well his nose gets hit by the glow of his incoming friends. And this is the most difficult bit to do, I find, the reflection on the helmet because we can't draw glass, right? So we can only draw the light that hits the glass. So I'm trying to get that reflection right by adding gray around the white lines that I made just to give the illusion that there is sort of a, a piece of gloss or something transparent in front of our hippo face. It's a real play between dark and light. And uh, yeah, in the magazine, in my character design quarterly, there are lots of lessons in there of how to place light. So practice, practice, I'm still practicing but I just love it. I love trying it out. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So the next step is grabbing my charcoal sticks and we're gonna add, just by rubbing the side of the charcoal stick along the page, we're gonna add a little bit of more griminess and sort of used lookingness to our spaceship I just I'm just letting the sides run and do its own thing kind of and then you can go in with your fingers and rub it so it looks like there's like dents and and things on our spaceship okay rubbing it in here we go now we need the lightest light which I love the Posca pen for or just acrylic paint but it, in a pen form it's it's really helpful and easy so in that reflection in the helmet I'm just going to draw a thin line that is completely flat and white and opaque 
an opaque line to show the transparency. And then around the edge, we're going to have some edge lighting on the left, on the belly and on the side of the helmet. And um, down all the way to the toe. No, not all the way to the toe. A little bit of reflection there on the pieces around his neck. I'm thinking those might be metal. And then there's also edge lighting for our glowy little spaceships. And maybe a little bit more reflection here on the tool and on our tube that connects him to the ship. And obviously the eyes, they, they always look better when they have that little dot of white or even two dots of white in them. Okay, here we go. Now in space, we need some stars. So just with the Posca pen, I'm making some dots around. Those are the, the bigger stars all the way up to the side here. And then there's a neat little trick. I'm gonna just grab a pastel crayon, just a normal stick of pastel crayon, a white one, and something sharp. Let's drop some powder on top and bottom, just on that side bit there. Drop the powder in and then add a little bit of yellow, the yellow pastel crayon. Please use pastel crayons, not all crayons. And then just with a piece of paper, just lay it over and gently press it into our ink on the other side as well. And then we have like a little bit of a, like a Milky Way situation happening with like tiny little stars and getting the excess pastel crayon off. And so you don't have to buy a yellow Posca pen. You can just go over the white Posca pen with a yellow pastel crayon. <laughs> pastel pencil just to make the white yellow. So this is my version of the drawing prompts Astronaut Small and Confusion. Thank you so much for watching and drawing with me. I hope you enjoyed it. On your way out, don't forget to like and subscribe and I hope I see you again soon for some more sketchbook adventures. Keep drawing, keep having fun, and don't ever think you can't draw. See you soon, bye.